Diagram uh, 7.1 shows two types of buzzers. One is a double-decker bus, which means there is uh, two floors. And one is a one-floor bus, which is a normal bus. Observe, diagram 7.1 carefully and identify which bus is more stable. Okay, so this one really is about stability. So you know that stability has a few factors and one of the factors is regarding the height. Why? Because the height has a relationship with the center of gravity. The higher the height, the, the higher the center of gravity. Eh? The higher something is, the higher the center of gravity is. And you know that we want the center of gravity to be low. Only when the center of gravity is low, then you are going to make it more stable. So that is why we want to have a lower height. Lower height means one floor bus. Nah. Eh, or the single floor bus. Eh, one floor. Let me take out the pen. One floor bus. The writing. Ah, one floor. One floor. One floor bus. Reasons? Reasons? Because it has a lower, it, uh, a lower, a lower height gives the bus a lower center of gravity. Okay? Lower height gives the bus a lower center of gravity. Or perhaps you could even uh, say a lower height gives the one floor bus right? a lower center of gravity. Okay, up to you if you want to say a lower, lower, uh, if you want to say a one floor or you don't want to say one floor, also can, no problem. Okay, next question. State, how the double-decker bus maintaining can maintain its stability during sharp cornering. How does the double decker bus maintain its stability during sharp cornering? That means, huh, when the bus is turning at the corner there, how are, how is it able to maintain its stability and will not topple over? They are, are you must uh, reduce your speed. Okay, you must reduce the driving speed. Because when you have a high speed, there is going to be high inertia. When there is high inertia, and you suddenly change position, when you suddenly change direction, it is going to flip the car over. Okay? It is going to flip the car over. Car supposed to go straight. You suddenly change direction. Change direction. You suddenly turn right. Corner, ma. Corner, suddenly turn right. And what happens is, because of inertia, the car is supposed to move forward and it will continue moving forward. So if you suddenly turn at high speed, the inertia does not have time to overcome. So an inertia will bring the car and flip it forward. Okay? That is why sometimes you can hear, you can see the, 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 the story such as the, the buzzers going to Genting. Or buzzers on a long, long, what do you call that? A long, long, uh, long distance travel. You will hear the buzzers, they topple over. Maybe they were, they were trying to avoid something. Turn, and then, suddenly, the inertia will push the bus to the opposite direction. So to overcome the inertia, we have got to reduce the driving speed. Because when you are slow, that means the inertia also low. Initial low, that means you can easily overcome. Easily overcome. That means when you turn, car follows the turn. So you must reduce driving speed. That's why people say when it's during corner, drive slow. And next question about parallel screen towers. Based on photograph 7.1, indicate whether the structures of A and B or A or B uh, have contributed to the uh, stability of the parallel screen towers. A or B. Among A or B will give stability to the Twin Towers. Hmm? Of course, you know, answer is, is B lah. A, eh? what is A trying to tell you? Eh? A trying to tell you the flaws on top of the Petronas Twin Towers. Oh. Do you want more flaws or less flaws? 
tingkat lah, tingkat lah. Of course, you want less floors. Because you know that when you have more floors, that means the building is taller. Building taller or building higher means you got more, you got a higher center of gravity. That means it's lower stability. Now you want to have more stability. Of course, you need to have the bridge. The bridge. Why the bridge? Okay, so first answer we know is B. Eh? But why? Because the bridge increases not the center of gravity, but the base area. Increases the base area of the building. Okay? When it has a bridge, that means the base area suddenly increased. Base area increase is one of the factors that, that the, uh, uh, contributes to a stability. Okay? So bridge increases the base area of the building. Okay, next. Okay, seesaw. Okay, seesaw. Based on the picture in diagram 7.1, the mass of the boy is 30 kilo while the girl is 20 kilo. Calculate the distance of P when the distance of Q is 1 meter when the seesaw is in equilibrium. Okay, this time I told you before. We have done this question before and I have also told you how to do this before. All right. Firstly, what does equilibrium mean? Equilibrium means that it is balance. Equilibrium means balance. So that means it, it, it wants to know the distance of P. P maksudnya apa? P maksudnya the distance here. Ah, distance here. This is P. Ah, this is P. Distance here. Ah, this is distance here. Okay. There's the boy's weight. There's the girl's weight. Okay. Distance P. Ah. It wants to know the distance of P when the seesaw is balanced. Or when the seesaw is not moving, uh, not moving, uh, not moving, that's called equilibrium. When the seesaw is not moving, that's called equilibrium. Eh? So you should recall that we have learned about moment of force because there is a fulcrum over here. Which uses the formula I've told you before F1D1 equals F2D2. Okay, this is the second time we've done this. If you still can't remember, please write down somewhere. F1, D1 equals F2, D2. What does F1 mean? F1 means this side. Nah. F1. The weight of the boy. The force of the boy. What does P1 mean? P1 means the... the uh, no, 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 P1. D1. D1 means the, the distance here. Distance of P. D1. Next, F2. F2, of course, the weight of the girl. The force of the girl. And D2 means the distance of the girl. Q. Okay, now. Now, you must know that when we are using this formula, the F means force. Force is in Newton. Force is in Newton. So, have the, bad, have the, B, have the, have the, what we call it, the, the, the habit of, uh, of uh, converting kilogram to Newton first. Okay? Now, well, why not let's label our data first and all. Let's make it, make it non-confusing. Let's label our data. F1, is 30 kilo d1 basically is what you want to find f2 is a 20 kilo and d2 is a one meter so the meter no problem that is the standard of uh, distance uh but we have to change this 30 kilogram how do we change kilogram to newton we need to multiply by 10. so 30 become 300 newton and 20 become 200 newton this one maintain, huh? Okay, now let's bring into the formula. Okay, let's bring into the formula. F1, D1 equals F2, D2. Okay, I don't know if a teacher in school teach you like this or not. Using this formula. But this is the way you should do. And it is in your political syllabus. F1, D1 equals F3, D2. Okay, so we put 300 here. Okay, you can put bracket if you want. You want to find a D1. Or if you don't want to put D1, you can put P there. No problem. Eh, because you know that D1 is P. P is D1. You put P there. Eh? Uh, equals to F2. F2 is a 200. D2 is a 1. So you know that to find P, you have to move 300 down. Linear equation. Basically, P now equals 200. 200 times 1 equals to 200 over 300. Cut, 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 cut. 
you know that your P equals 2 over 3. 2 over 3 maksudnya 0.67 meter. 2 over 3 meter. Or approximately 0.67 meters. Okay? 0.67 meters. 2 over 3. 0.67 meters. So that means the distance of the boy to the fulcrum. Distance of the boy to the fulcrum or distance D1 or distance P equals to 0 0.67 meters when they seesaw. Or we call it the lever. This is what lever, eh? when the lever is in an equilibrium. This seesaw is actually a lever. This seesaw is a uh, first class lever. Okay? First class lever. Fulcrum in the middle. First class lever. Okay? First class lever. What eh? Alright, uh, next question, uh, number 8. Uh, diagram 8.1 shows a view of nature that contains the basic resources on earth that sustain the life of all living things on the earth. You have uh, it's a, it's a basic uh, nature landscape, oh, got the lake and the water and everything. I uh, state two basic resources on earth. Okay, what you can see here, quite a few things. Lah. Number one, you can say water. Okay, water, of course. Air, of course. Soil is a basic resource, minerals, living things, the trees, okay? uh, trees are living things, man. and okay. Okay. Now uh, some of the resources on Earth are renewable, while, while some are not renewable. Mark, tick on the diagram which are not renewable. Of course, uh, we know that. The first one is the, uh, this is the, uh, what we call the oil. Eh? Oil. Uh, petroleum, lah. petroleum product. Oil, lah. oil, crude oil. Crude oil, a petroleum product. Which includes all the petroleum products, lah. your bitumen, lah, kerosene, lah, fuel oil, lah. Your jet oil la, your 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 pet, pet, your petroleum la, petrol gas la, no? uh, is from the same place. Fossil fuel, ah, fossil fuel. That's the word, fossil fuel, fossil fuel. So you know that this is a non-renewable, because fossil fuel was left over as the remains of the dead animals and plants, millions of years ago. Okay, millions of years ago, uh, when the dinosaurs, you know. Uh, they, during that time, dinosaurs, they, they die and then they are buried underneath the uh, layers of rocks in the soil which their bodies will decompose and when they decompose, they will turn into this sort of a uh, fossil fuel. Lots of things, crude oil, uh, uh, gases like a methane gas, you know? a lot of things are in, underneath, the, underneath the ocean, okay? uh, near the crust of the earth. Fossil fuel, you can have a look at this. Uh, second one is wind. Of course, wind, you know, is a renewable. The third one is water. Lah. Water is also a renewable. So only fossil fuel is not a renewable. That means you will not be able to get any more of it when it finishes. Now, of course, will it finish anytime soon? Probably not in our life. Lah. Okay? Probably not in our life. Lah. In our great, 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 great grandchildren's life, maybe. Lah. Probably not in our life. Okay, but it will finish lah. The thing is, it will finish because it will not have new fossil fuel. Okay, it will not have new fossil fuel. Alright, so number two, suggest one source which can be used to replace the sources that stated in B number one. Any lah. Any lah. You can say water also can. Uh, you can say uh, the solar. Solar. Let's talk about solar. Okay. Solar, solar power. Eh? Give your reason. Solar energy is a source of renewable energy hmm. eh? solar power solar energy is a source of renewable energy of course you will say that uh, the sun will also because if you have studied before you know that the sun is actually giving us the solar energy by reducing its mass by reducing the sort of matter inside the sun. Then you say, that means the sun can finish one day or can stop burning one day. Yes. It's true. Theoretically, it's true. The sun will stop burning one day. 
But that is even more billions and trillions of years later. Okay? That is your great, 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 100 times great grandchildren don't know if you can see the sun stop burning or not. So, in the end of the day, we still call it a renewable energy. Lah. That means you can always get it every day, got sun. Ah, renewable energy, okay? And number two, state one way to conserve and preserve the Earth's resources by using or by opting into renewable energy. Definitely is the best answer. Okay? Or you could even say uh, uh, by, by recycling. By recycling. By recycling, that's the best way. But if you want to conserve, let's uh, by by reducing, recycling and reusing. Why? Eh? Because you must know that to manufacture our everyday products such as your cars, la, plastic bottles, la, your books, la, we will need a lot of energy. Okay? We will need a lot of energy. So if you are able to reduce and reuse and recycle, you are going to reduce the amount of, let's say, plastic bottles that we have to manufacture. One day, you use one less plastic bottle, the factory will make one bottle less. That's why we can reuse. The recycling is, uh, one day you go and recycle one plastic bottle, that means they don't have to go and find the material for one plastic bottle. Now, reduce is like driving a car or when you are carpooling or you use public transport. When you use public transport, you use less fuel. You use less, you use less fuel, that means there is still more fossil fuel. 